Clayton Spinner here. Um, this is my submission for the Missionary and Cannibals project. Basically, uh, the description of the problem is you have three missionaries and three cannibals on one side of a river. They're all trying to cross. They have one boat. If at any time there are more cannibals than missionaries on one side, the cannibals will eat the missionaries, and the boat can only hold two people at a time. Uh, there also has to be someone on one side of the river with the boat to row it back. The boat can't just, you know, come back by itself. So, uh, with all that said, basically, uh, the way I solve the problem is representing the state space of all the possible moves um, by the missionaries and cannibals uh, with a node class. Uh, nodes in a tree. The tree is made up of all the different states, and the each node's child is a node with the next possible state. So, uh, oh, where is it here? Um, Node.h. It's got uh, the state is represented by an integer. Um, basically, it's a two digit integer. The uh, tens place is the number of missionaries, uh, one through three. Well, oh, sorry, zero through three. And the one space is the cannibals. Um, and that's for the near side of the river. Basically, it, if there's a zero there, it's implied that all three are on the other side of the river. So you really only need um, just a simple integer to represent the placement of all the uh, missionaries and cannibals. Uh, this is opposed to having, say, a um, an array with... Uh, with four slots in it, um, one for each, you know, two for each side of the river, one for missionaries, one for cannibals. Uh, it's a lot smaller. Basically, you just use arithmetic to change um, the states depending on who moves where. Uh, you have a Boolean. I called it near shore, but basically it just tells which side of the shore the boat is on. Um, each node has a link to its parent as well as to the head of the tree, uh, which I actually didn't end up needing to use. I only needed parent to trace back through the tree. Um, it has a vector of pointers to all of the nodes that are its children, basically, and that represents all the possible um, states that you can get to from the state that this node represents. Uh, and then I have depth as well, which, uh, to be honest, I didn't need depth in the end. Uh, initially, I thought I'd have to check um, if it found multiple solutions to see which solution was at the shallowest depth, which would basically be the uh, fastest solution to the problem and the most efficient. Uh, but I ended up not needing that. But that's uh, that's still part of... I just left it in the node class for now. Um, so the way you get from states is with a transition function, um, mine called aptly transition. It takes in the node. It first checks to see if the node does indeed contain the solution. Uh, gets the state space if space equals zero, meaning now this is zero, meaning that everyone's on the other side of the river, uh, because again the integer uh, represents the amount of missionaries and cannibals that are on the near side of the river. Uh, far side is the side they're trying to get to. Uh, just returns it does nothing if if it's found. Um, this actually this transition and this solution is not recursive. Uh, transition does not call itself on the children of the node uh, of you know future states that it finds. I end up actually doing it. Uh, well, I'll get to that a little bit later. But I do it through a um, through a while loop, going through the history. Uh, but I'll explain that later. Uh, basically, transition just populates the children of the node with all the possible states that it can go to. Uh, first, it with each side there are five possible moves either one missionary moves over two missionaries move over one cannibal two cannibals or one of each uh, so that's what these if statements do here the if is to check to see if it has enough people to actually move over so for the move one missionary moves over you need you know one missionary on that side to actually move it uh, if that's the case uh, see it subtracts 10 here tens place is the uh, missionaries again uh, and then it creates a new child for that node. Uh, it does that for the other four possible moves on the near side. Um, this is if node is on the if the boat's on the near shore. And then again down here, transitions for when the boat is on the far shore. Basically does the exact same thing, just in reverse. Uh, 
all the possible moves for the boat coming back to the near shore. Uh, then what it does is this this population here doesn't check to see if the moves are legal or if they've already been found um, in another part of the tree. So that's what uh, cull does down here. Basically cull the node is to take out all the children that are illegal moves or are moves that we've already searched. So here it just iterates through all the children, uh, performs is illegal on the child state, and if it is, uh, no delete child, del child. Um, is illegal is basically one big uh, boolean if statement. Uh, basically this is the arithmetic equivalent of if there are more cannibals on the near shore than missionaries, or if there are more cannibals than missionaries on the far shore, return true to is illegal, otherwise return false. So if it finds it's true, it deletes the child, it's not a possible state. Uh, then this section checks to see if it's something we've already found, a state we've already come to. And it does that by actually keeping a history of all the moves, which uh, it then checks each child against. It's got the two for loops to iterate through the children and iterate through the history states. Uh, it then compares them if they're the same um, node del child. Uh, so then that pops back up here. Uh, post call it just prints out the nodes that are left, uh, the states that are left. Anything that's left, it adds on to, pushes on to the history vector of all the nodes for things we've searched, and prints that out, prints out the history, and then basically ends. Uh, so again, as I was saying, this isn't recursive. What it does is it searches through the history um, iteratively, just one by one, until it finds, until it hits the state uh, zero zero, basically, until it hits the solution. Uh, see transition on history and uh, this effectively does a breadth first search it will search the initial state that I put in which is river uh, node river is basically the head of the tree give it the starting state of 33 which is everybody's on the near side uh, and then it just starts going and all of the heads children all of the first states children will then be the next nodes in the list in history and I'll just go through all those then it'll go down to the next level, go through all those children's children, and it'll just keep going. So it ends up being a breadth first search. Um, it kicks out of the while loop when it finds a state that is the solution. Uh, and then basically it's just a matter of tracing back through the solution's parents to find the order of moves that you did to get to the final state. So it sets answer equal to um, the history state that the answer is. Um, actually here, what do I do? I think I searched through history. I don't know if I really need to do that. I can just set answer equal to whatever I is at that point. So I should probably change that. Um, but anyway, basically once it gets answer equal to the node that has the solution state, it then sets up a vector moves and basically just answer becomes answer's parent and then it pushes, um, the answer onto the vector moves and moves just becomes a list of effectively all the nodes you have to go through to get to the answer and then I just print those back out um, and it prints out all the moves you did so let's give this a run um, let's see as you can see up here this is it starts with uh, state 3-3 three, three, uh, where everybody's on one side of the river you see these are the five possible moves here. Um, these haven't been checked for illegality yet. Um, Mid-cull is basically in the middle of the cull routine. It's taken out the illegal moves. So as you can see, uh, 1320 is gone, as well as 2310, because in both of these cases, there are more cannibals on the near shore than missionaries. So um, that's an illegal state. Missionaries would be toast. Uh, then post call it hasn't removed anything for already being on the history because there ha there isn't anything yet. History only contains the first state. So then it adds those three states onto the history, iterates down, and starts looking at this move twenty two, or sorry, um, two two one one. Puts out all those states. Uh, you know, calls ones that are illegal, calls ones that are already on the history vector which um, takes out 3300 because that's 
the initial state. That's just like moving the two guys back and being right where you started. Uh, so then it keeps going down. As you can see, history is getting larger and larger as it's searching more and more states and adding them to to the vector. Um, it finally hits the solution state. Uh, print out. I print out final state three three. That's incorrect. All right. Basically, what happened there is I had the C out up here. Um, where answer actually is the answer, prints out the final state, which just prints out zero, zero, just to show what the integer state is when the solution is found, um, just to you know make sure it's right. I moved it down here because I thought, why is it up here? I can just have it down here where I do all my formatting. But what happens is, as I iterate through answer's parents, answer actually becomes the head of the list. So that's why it printed out 3, 3. It printed out what river was, because that's where it ends. Um, as it builds the move list, which I then print out. So I moved it, moved it back, and now it's um, printing out final state zero. And then, of course, these are the moves that it used to get through. And if you put these into, if you do these out you know, by hand, it will find the answer without violating um, any of the constraints. So um, it works.